Hello, good day. Welcome back to Go On The Run. And today we're going to move on to Certificate Part 3. And in this video, a couple things I want to do, but I'm going to still shoot to keep the video under 20 minutes. So here's what we have ahead of us. In the Part 2, we're able to create a slightly more sophisticated certificate within terms of more data, right? More fields and so on being created. And so that should be a valid certificate. What we did was we didn't um, examine our certificate um, you know, that we created. We sort of created it and we said that it looked successful, we didn't get any error, and we sort of ended the video there because I was trying to keep it under the 20 minutes. But I did in other videos show you that you can use the open SSL command to examine certificates. Now, if you're on a Mac like me, you can just say open on that file and then there's the Mac utility that took for certificates will open and the key tool and you can examine it that way graphically. But Today, I'll stick to using OpenSSL command because you, everyone can get that. Regardless of your platform, you should be able to go, get, go, be able to go there and download OpenSSL and install it. For Mac and Linux people, it pretty much come pre-installed because you have an OpenSSH server. But for Windows folks, you just have to go check it out and download it. All right. So without much further ado, let's jump in. Now, while I'm creating um, my stand on my Visual Studio Code editor here, if you can do me a huge favor and just hit the like button on this video, and if you haven't subscribed yet, please click subscribe and the notification bell so you can be notified when I upload new videos. So I'm going to go back to my command line real quick and copy the example we started with. I'm going to do recursive copy. And so that's going to be from part two. Again, we had several exercises there in exercise three, and I'll copy it here today. What I want to do is start with examining the certificate that we we're able to create. So I'll go to this directory and I'm going to say, go build that. And then we should have a secure SEC file and let's just run it. And this is going to give me my circuit in DER format. Like I said, if you want a Mac, you could just simply say open ca.der and it should open it. And that's how we did it. But let me clean up my screen a little bit. We can use the open SSL command. Now, if you do not have open SSL, um, you can install it. So when you type OpenSSL like that, you go into the interactive mode and you can type help and see all the other subcommands that are available for you to call. One of those subcommands like I showed you before was X519. So I can type X519 help. And then when I do that, and so for now, I'm going to just um, work on this one terminal. And so for X509 command, you can see, which I've shown you before, by default, it expects things to be in the PEM format and more on this later on in the today's video. And we can see that in is the input file or standard in um, by default. And we see some other things like no certificate output. We're not gonna worry about that yet. And uh, let's see what else there is. Um, I'm looking for the text. Um, parameter and where is that? There we go. So print the certificate in text format. So essentially those are the three parameters that we care about. So I'm going to come out of, um, you know, interactive mode, clean up my screen. And I'm going to type open SSL X509. This is a command I want. I want to print out the certificate in text format and minus in is the input. And we have this file called C cert. And we also know that our cert is in DR format. So I'm going to say in form is DER because remember by default, it wants to use PEM. And then, um, yep, just going to run it. And this is what we have. And I've shown you this before. As you can see, version three, and we know there's a self signed certificate because the issuer information is identical um, to the subject information. And note, remember what, it, what we said is that certificates are this way, it's like a digital ID. And so you have who the certificate is about and then who issued a certificate. So on a driver's license, you sort the subject information will be about you and issuer information is gonna be about your department of motor vehicle. And if you're in a state, it's gonna be by your state. If we're talking about a passport, subject information is gonna be about you. And then the issuer information is gonna be about the country that issued that certificate um, with all the nice same trimmings of when it was issued, when it expires. And this is other thing because we're doing digital certificate that allow us to be able to 
you know, say what kind of algorithm, which algorithm was used for signing keys and which algorithm was used for different things. All right. So that's that that allows us to examine our certificate. Um, before I move on, notice we have some extra information here, which is we talk about this, the subject alternative names, and that was allows us to put in like um, the DNS names, right? The host name and email, for example. So now that we have a certificate in DER format, one of the other things we want to do is see another way of creating certificates. Now we created it in Go and we went through that whole thing, but we can use open SSL to create a certificate also. So we can say, let me clean up my screen, we can say open SSL. And if we enter this and then type again, just help, we'll see a number of um, subcommands. But one of them is to be able to um, make, create a new certificate and basically request a certificate. And so you could do a certificate signing request, which we're not going to get into. But with the same RQ Q command, you can do request a new certificate or request a certificate sign in, uh, create a certificate sign in request. So we're going to say um, REQ that help to see the option. And again, here is the in format, out format, um, if you have a certificate and you can specify like whether or not um, it should output the public key where you should write it to and um, do not encrypt the output um, key, right? Um, just write it out in it's like the pen format. So um, it's you can put it in a text message or something like that. Um, the key file, we should write that public key because you remember when we created a certificate, or example, we just write out the certificate so far, but we don't write out that private key that was used to create that certificate. So we sort of have a problem because if we ever need to sign anything or anything, well, when we run our program, we created the key in memory and then it's done. Our program exits, that's it. So what we really should be doing is making sure that we also write out our private key that we use to sign these certificates, right? Or create our certificate. But um, anyway, I'm going through just how this other command, which we've written a very simplified version of this, would work. And so let's go ahead and try and create a certificate in the DER format, or it actually we can leave it in as PEM as the default. And um, let's see what um, we get. Okay, so it's open SSL. We're saying we're doing a request for a certificate we're going to say minus new key. And I don't know if you, I didn't really point it out, but my cursor was hovering around about three um, properties here, parameters that had to do with the type of um, key you, um, encryption you're going to be using and the key size. And so we're going to say RSA, our favorite, and we're going to say 2048 as the, the number, um, the bit size for our key. And we, of course, want to do a new certificate. And then we say do not encrypt the private key. And this is an X519 certificate, and it's for, um, in terms of days, we can set 256 days. And the output for our certificate is just called sort.pem. And then we're gonna say minus key out, which is where should we write the output key file? We'll say key.pem also. PEM is a text format, which we will get into a little bit later. And so if we run this, um, it's prompts us for some information. And so it's asking for the country code. If you remember, in order for us to create our certificate, we had to provide information about the subject. So I'll say US here. And the state, which or province, I'll just say state. Doesn't really matter. City um, or locale. Remember, we had that. Um, and then we have organization. And let's do organization unit. And then fully qualified name for host name. Or if you're doing this for someone, it would be their name. So uh, let's do here. Um, my host name here is V. Mad, you know, local. Let's call it local domain. That's my host name. Let's go. And here you can specify email address, but we're not gonna put that in. And there we go. And so if we do minus LRT, we should expect us to see that we have CA sort, which was created by our Go application, and then this key that pen, which is a private key and um, start that PEM, these two coming from being created by the open SSL command. Now, since we know how to examine a certificate that we created in DER format, 
we can do the same thing and examine the sort of gate that was created in um, the stored in the PEM format. So X509 sort of gate again. We want text the sort of gate to be written out in text format. The input file is this sort that PEM file. And um, yeah, that's it. And as you can see, it looks very much like the sort of gate that we created before. And notice we know it's a self signed sort of gate because the issuer and the subject information are the same. And we have the same, you know, a year from now, blah, 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 and all these other interesting bits, you know, RSA encryption, 24 bits, and so on. And so it looks pretty much the same like what we had before. Okay. So, oh, oh, by the way, I did not show you what that PEM file looks like. So let me open this, go here to um, the cert, and you can see it says begin cert, and then it got this code in. Um, value here, but it's all text that you can drop in an email. And so for the key, it's the same thing. It just says begin and then it says private key. And then this is our key binary value being encoded in base 64. And so um, that's all there is, right? And so you can read this back, um, you know, you can put this in the email, that sort of thing. It makes it easy to pass around. I think I mentioned that in one of the videos that in Unix land, we basically use PEM um, format in Java land, they have a key store, which is a you know, custom format for that keeps things in a binary format as far as I know. All right, so now let's move on to exercise two in which we're gonna start, well, you know what? Um, we haven't made any changes to our example code here. So let's just um, copy it. And in exam exercise two, what we'll do is we'll start making this so that uh, we can write out PEM format, see how to write out PEM format. And then eventually we're going to end by being able to read back in a sort of key in regards to whether it's in PEM format or DER format. You know, since we created it and can write it out, we might as well see how to read it back in. And much, much later, you know, of course it's gonna come in when you want to establish a connection to another host that you'll be able to read in the sort of key that is provided. Um, or you have stored for that host to be able to establish, establish secure communication, of course. Um, so for our example here, I'll go, and so, you know, let me clean up a little bit, and I'm going to say any file that have the extension PEM, I want to remove it. And so similarly, um, anything that have a extension DER, I want to remove it. And um, any program that is, um, I think that's the name, SEC, let me just remove that. Just clean up a little bit. And it's just a, a little sanity that I'm doing it here. Okay, so now we're back here. This file is deleted, so let me close that. And so what I like to do is, like I said, um, make our application such that we can start um, working on how, seeing how to write out things in PEM format. So in my main, it's pretty simple. It's just called, you know, issuer that new self signed sort of gate. But what I actually want to do is move this file creation out of here because I eventually want to be able to see what format I should write it out in. And I'll go back here. And of course, this is going to complain. It's not, it doesn't have the file. So I'll take that out of here and I'll put it here. And we need to be able to get the cert. So this thing should really return the cert and an error if we can create it. And so let's go back here and let's just say that, that what it does is it creates a return at x pointed to x509, that certificate, and an error. And so here we after we create the cert. We're not going to deal with if there's an error right here, we we'll cut this out. And what we'll do instead is return two parameters, which is the cert and whatever error we have created in the circuit. So that seems to be correct. Um, not sure why this is complaining. Oh, it's not, I uh, forgot. This is a slice of bytes that we get back in their format. So there we go. And we'll go back here and what we're going to do is we're going to check for an error after we create the cert and we're going to see if there is an error, then we're going to log rust fatal f 
and this is going to return like a one error code of one from our application so we don't actually do any explicit return um yep so we'll do that okay so one is we couldn't create a certificate the other one is if we couldn't write the certificate all right so that seems to be okay so far the other thing i would like to do since we have a variable name is be able to say that though um well why not just um use a parameter allow the user to specify the file name so let's do that okay so i think that's all basically all i did was you remove the file creation into main one of the things i've noticed is that sometimes if you see some errors in your ide um, in vs code you know exit and reopen and those errors go away it's very strange um, but let's go here to exercise two and let's do go run i'll do this and this should run successfully and if i do the same thing but instead i give it minus h for help it should tell me at all it expect a out option and i can give it my search that der for example and i should be able to get a circuit in der format which is right there all right so let me clean up again because i really don't um want any of these files so that's good so that's exercise two um in exercise three i want the user to be able to specify that they want it in der format um, or if they want in der or pem format cells. sorry by default we're already doing it in der format so let's allow them to be able to specify that they want it in um, pem format so again i don't need to touch that i need to touch this so what we'll do is we will add a parameter for them to specify um, the extra option so we'll say let's just keep it simple and we'll say that our format m is a boolean so we'll keep this false there all right so that seems okay to me um, let me bring this over a little bit so if this specify this flag by default it's going to be false um, if they want it to be in um, you know in PEM they will just specify um, PEM parameter and that's going to tell us that though it should be in PEM format so now we need to test if they want the output in PEM format so we're going to just take the file name itself or whatever they give us and add DER and then we're going to use that to write it to the search file. So here I'm going to see that um, instead of us having a cert that we write out, we're gonna write out some buffer. And so let me do this actually. So we still need to, regardless of what format they, which format they want, we still need to create the certificate. So we're still gonna do that first. And then after that point, then we're going to check and see if it's pen format. If it's not pen format, then write the DOR file. And in which case, we're going to have a buffer here. That's a slice of byte. And we're going to say buff is equals the sort. Because we know that they're going to write it out in sort format. So, so far, everything should still work the same. Else, if they do want, um, PEM format, then we have to do some work. In this case, we want the file name to be different. That's the first thing. So this is gonna be PEM. Let me see if I reformat. And then now we need to do some work in order to get things into a PEM format. So how do we write things in PEM format? Well, fortunately, um, that's one of the encoding format that Go ships with. So let's go take a look at the documentation. So here we are at you know Golang if we go on Golang packages and we scroll down to encoding, we'll see PEM. And you see it says PEM format implement the PEM data encoding, which originated in privacy enhanced email. The most common use of PEM encoding today is in TLS key and certificate. Uh, we're not gonna worry about the TLS part there, but certificate, that's certainly important and that's what we're doing. And it's fairly easy to use. You just say encode, you specify where you wanna write your data to, and you give it this thing called a block. Decoding is pretty much similar. It's just decode some bytes and it gives you a block and then the rest of the bytes, if there's anything remaining. We're not gonna decode just yet. That is for our next and last exercise. But for now, 
we want to do is encode. And so what we're interested in seeing is what is this block. And so the block is this struct that has three fields, string, the type, which is can be taken any preamble, you know, it can be RSA key, private key or something. And if you remember, when we run our, um, I should have kept it around, but when we run our um, command to create the open, okay, let's do it again. And notice how here it says begin, dash 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 begin, it says circuit, and then dash dash end. Well, and then the key had the same thing. It had something like private key. It didn't say RSA private key. It only said private key. Well, this is that preamble they're talking about that is here. This is what you get to specify. This, that is the tech type. And then header, which this doesn't have, is some optional things that you can also insert between the preamble and the actual encoded bytes. And then bytes are the bytes you want to encode. And says typically it's DER encoded, which is the thing, the bytes are already DER encoded, which is the certificate, how the certificate is, right? And then you'll have this written out as this PIM is really 64 or base 64 encoding. That's what this is, right? We talked about encoding already and why you want to encode things because by default, DER is binary and putting that in email might be an issue. But by um, having it as base 64 encoded bytes, well, there we go. And this is what it looks like. The result looks like this, which is that begin type and then end type and then optionally the headers, but we don't have any headers and then the base 64 encoded bytes of whatever you specify here. Okay, so hopefully that is pretty straightforward. Let's jump back here. And so what we wanna do is to be able to create a block. So, and so the bytes for us is gonna be the surf gate. So this now have to be stored as a block. So let's store that as a block. And now where we have our block, now we can say that we need to encode it. So we can say pem that encode and pem that encode needs a writer and we're going to use a bytes buffer and do a log fatal of course because well this is the main application if we can't write this out in the, the format that the users are, the user has requested then we're going to terminate the program if everything is all good then we can generate bytes buff the equals to bytes the buffer that um, bytes which would be all that pem encoded data we'll just copy it here to buff and then we pass through and they will write it out to the same file. Well, the file name would have been changed accordingly depending on the input um, type that the user requested. So let's go see um, if this works. And so let's clean up. Let's go back to exercise three and we'll do um, go run that minus H and we should see another parameter for pen. And if we just run this, we'll get our data in um, DER format. And you can see ah, DER, DER, so we don't want that. Um, that's a little bit redundant. So let's do this and take out this and take it that way. So let's rerun it. We get DER format file. And then if we want, we can specify minus pem and that gives us a pem encoded file so you can see that here and if we click there and we click on pem this is what we have see begin and surf and then here is that extra information the created by which is um, our executable path and that's because we were doing a go run as opposed to building it and running it but that's just i just want to show you can put in any garbage you want really for the header and then there's our certificate encoded already in pem format and then here's their format and it's a binary file okay so we know now how open ssl command creates a certificate now let's wrap up by writing a final example that can read back our certificate either in their format or pem format so we go back up one, we'll clean up and exercise four. Right, so let's close everything here so I don't get confused about what I'm coding and close that, close this and let's go back to main. And so what I'll do is I'll rename this file and then now um, 
This allows me to specify an input file. Let me split this code into so a function. So we have a function that creates a sort and a function that um, reads the sort. So right now we have all this that we need to create the sort. So let's do here and the fun create sort. And that should be that. And then the only thing I need to do now is to figure out when I call create sort versus when I call read sort. So let me have a function here called read sort. I haven't written it yet, but we'll write that soon. I'll say if the file name is, is greater than zero, then what they want us to do is to create a sort. Otherwise, call and um, after this, I want to return if this is successful um, because they asked to create a sort. So I don't want to do both things. And then otherwise, I want to read a sort. And of course, that's the end. Apologies for the noise from the street. So the way this is, um, I do not have a variable for my int file. And the way this is because we pro provide a basic file name, this is always going to be true. So I do not want to do that. So instead, I'm going to force the user to always provide, provide a file name so that I can be able to determine when and or whether or not they actually want us to run create or input. Now I could have structured this differently and um, use something else to determine if we're doing input or output, but I think this is pretty straightforward. At least I think so. So what we should check is that both strings are not zero because if they are, then we can't do anything. And then if both strings are greater than zero, then we also should um, complain. So only if one or the other, if we pass this point, then only one was specified. And so if that was the output one, then we run create certain return. Otherwise we run create um, read sort. So in terms of reading the sort, we sort of have an idea what that might be. It might be in a PEM format or it might be in DR format. So let's use IOUtil to just read the bytes in and then we'll make a decision. Now we have the bytes. We don't actually know if the bytes are in PEM format or um, DR format. We can have them tell us like the open SSL command. But since our program is so simple, I think that we could just simply assume that it's um, PEM format, try to decode it. And if decoding fail, then it must be um, in DER, and then if that fails, then it's just invalid. We fail to read the sort. So that to me looked like this. Now I showed you that the decode command takes a set of slice of bytes and it returns the block, which would be populated this way from the file, and it returns any extra bytes. Why the rest of the bytes? Well, if you had a file with multiple sort gates in it, it would read the first one, return it to offset to the remainder, and you can keep reading in a loop essentially to read each um, sort of kit in or if you had a list of keys. So we know that we only have one, so we don't care. And so that's why I ignore the rest, um, the second parameter. If it can successfully read, if this these bytes does represent PEM data, then it will decode it into this block. If not, it wouldn't be able to decode it. So the block will be nil. So that's what I'm going to be using to determine sort of automatically without the user after to tell me whether I'm dealing with PEM or DER format or something that we just don't understand. If I know that how I got a block, a valid block back, which means block is not nil, then this was in PEM format. So now I have this file, the value is in PEM format. I can then access the bytes and those bytes now is going to be in DER because we already decoded. We're successfully able to decode those PEM data and turn it into a block. So those bytes must be now in DER format or at least binary. So now I can tell X509 to parse the, the certificate from the block that bytes. So that's why I check to see if block is not nil. If block is nil, it means that we fail to parse it as PEM and therefore we still have those bytes sitting in buff as just non-PEM data, which we're gonna assume is DER. So we'll just tell, say X509 parse that as the, um, from the, as the parse the certificate from those bytes. Again, if we cannot parse the certificate, well, we're gonna end the program. Otherwise we can say, 
And in terms of the certificate that we have now, we could continue with the rest of the program to use it. So I assign the certificate to this built-in variable and you know that takes away the error message. So now let's go test it out. Uh, exercise four. Oh no, that's not what we want to go. We want to go to exercise four. Let's clean up our stream. And so for now, I'll build it. I'll do full build. No error. Good. So let's clean up RM, this demo file and the PEM file that we had from before. Clean up again. And then I'll do SEC. Remember, we have a few parameters now. So let's use them. So we'll say out and we'll say um, my cert. Uh, and that should give us a Durham format certificate. And if we run this with um, minus p and pem, you know what? Yeah, I messed up the parameter here when I call it. So let's create a file minus pem. Yep, that I want to remove that file. And so let's run this again. Sec minus pm, and then minus output file is call it my cert for example and so clean up fd and so we should have our der and pem file great and so testing reading now we should do this and we should say minus in my underscore sort that der and we successfully read the certificate and pem we successfully read the certificate here's the thing these two certificate were created and written by in Go code. The question here is, can we get our Go application to read a certificate that was created by OpenSSL? So let's do that and let's use this to create a new certificate. So there we go, everyone, and didn't prompt me for anything because I provide that subject information. And so um, here we go, we have so cert.pem and then my key.pem, which we discussed already. So the question is, can my Go application read this cert.pem file that was created by OpenSSL? And so we'll go minus in and we'll say cert.pem and successfully read it. So hopefully this convinces you that in Go, you can create and read valid certificates. Now, if I try to use OpenSSL to read um, my PEM certificate, I have a problem. We can see it all, I can use OpenSSL to read it in DER format. I just can't use OpenSSL to read it in PEM format. So let's try that before I end. And so this should be able to read my cert. It doesn't read it. It gives me this error. So I think this is a problem that is with Apple. I don't know what it is, but the fact that though, we can read either PEM format that we would write or was created by OpenSSL tells me that oh, we're not creating an invalid certificate. The fact that the DR format is read correctly also convinces me that oh, we're not doing anything invalid. The documentation for the PEM encoding says that oh, this is what you use and the bytes are usually in DR format. So all that tells me that oh, we're doing the right thing. If you run this Windows and it works for you, please let me know. I would really like to know. Um, I can run this on Linux. Um, I'll check that out and see if I still get the same error. All right. Take care. Um, hope you learned something new. If you haven't already, please hit the like button for me. Really, really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Hit the like button if you haven't yet. Hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell. See you in the next video.